down there is the syllabus brief, which, uh, of course, we don't give out the syllabus anymore because of the cost of reproduction to the college. So that is not the official uh, syllabus brief. What it does is just tell you what you need for the class, the supplies you need for the class, and uh, also the time that it meets and how to contact uh, contact me. The actual official uh, course syllabus oops, is on Blackboard. So I think the site uh, should be up for the class. You know, there's very few differences in, the, in your uh, syllabus. The, uh, the grading is set up different in your class. Uh, we're looking for one for robotics, but you'll need to go and look for the syllabus and see how your, uh, your grading is set up, Josh, for the class you're in. Uh, so operation and programming. So here's the Blackboard site, uh, home, announcements, uh, this is where I'll post announcements. But what I'll do is I'll, when, every time I post an announcement, I'll also send it out uh, on email. So it's very important that you check your email at least once a day uh, for this class, right? Okay. I know checking email is not fun, but a lot of people forget about it. Uh, course calendar, uh, this is the course calendar for the class. Uh, and this this evolves during the semester, but what I do is I've gone out here and put in the uh, uh, when the assignments are due. I think we have five assignments already up there, and when they're due. Uh, also, the test schedule should be already up here. So uh, we're going to have our first test on uh, right here. Is that September sixth, right? So that's when we'll have our first test in this class. The, uh, the projects class only has two tests. It has a midterm and a final. The rest of it is lab. <laughs> so that's predominantly a lab thing. Uh, so li uh, assignments. Drop ad, by the way, uh, has been extended until Thursday, from what I understand. So if you need to drop any classes or add any classes. And I thought it was kind of strange uh, that they put drop ad before a Tuesday, Thursday class even met, <laughs> you know. So you got some people that won't show up for class because they're on Tuesday and they show up for Tuesday and find out their classes have been canceled. So, uh, so they did extend it till Thursday uh, if you uh, need to do that. Uh, so they, they sh should have done that anyway. So this is the schedule. Uh, uh, of course, uh, this won't affect us, but there is a holiday uh, on the 5th. I think it's Memorial, not Memorial Day, uh, Labor Day. Uh, but it will affect your Monday and Wednesday classes. Uh, when I post stuff on the calendar, though, I don't really, sometimes I might have posted an announcement, but this is where I put the due dates and all this other kind of stuff as the class evolves. So you can always come up to Blackboard and check that calendar and say, is there anything I need to do, you know, this week or whatever. And of course, uh, the syllabus agreement uh, which is required by the course is due by the next class meeting, so you need to get that done. And then assignment one needs to be completed uh, by midnight Friday. Let me tell you that. So if you go up there and look at it, it says the assignment is due by midnight. It's real hard on this to actually set times, so what I do is I just make it, I just click all day, and then I put in the bottom, in the little bottom there when it's actually due and stuff like that so y'all need to check that yeah this right here is real real weird and it takes time okay so there's course calendar uh, this is where your assignments are at so uh, right now we have uh, and there assignment three is a robot safety video and so this is all your assignments uh, this is your last assignment. Uh, this won't be available. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that not visible to you because that will, that will not open up until uh, around test three. Uh, 
because when uh, they'll they'll send you an email uh, indicating that you need to do the survey uh, for the course. Uh, first week in course info, this is a very important link. This is where the actual course syllabus is at. Uh, this is where your first quizzes and agreements are at. Uh, so we'll go in and this is where we'll look at the actual official course syllabus. And we're not going to go over the syllabus, the complete syllabus, because you're required to read it. Uh, this is the brief which I gave you, so if you lose your copy, you can make another copy of it. Uh, of course, this class doesn't require uh, a textbook. Well, it does, but it's one that uh, you'll have to print off. Uh, so we give it out free. All it does is cost you the money to, to print it. Uh, course description, it says the course meets, see syllabus, you know, the instructor sees the syllabus brief. So uh, we have uh, industrial robotics. This is a basic theory uh, book that I wrote. This is no charge to Blackboard. And I'll show you how to get to it. Uh, safety glasses with side shields. Anytime we go over there and, and work with the robots, anytime we're in lab, you're going to have your safety glasses on. Uh, you need a tape measure. We're going to be doing a lot of measuring when we program our robots. Then you're supposed to come down like five millimeters and stuff like that. And, uh, you're going to have to measure, you need to measure that off, and we're going to do it in metric. Pre, we're going to do it in metric. Uh, this, it's time, if you hadn't done it by now, it's time for you to become very, from, uh, start to become familiar with uh, the international standard unit for measurements. Uh, we're about the only current that, uh, country that's using what we call the English Imperial Standard, or they call it SAE Standard for measurements. You know, and even even with us, a lot of things have started to move over to the metric system, like automobiles and cars like that. You know, they've moved over, except for the speedometers. So, uh, so you need to start getting familiar with that, because uh, the robots are set up to do everything in metric. Uh, even though you can put it into the English standard, here goes Torian. Here's the three. Uh, we're not going to let y'all change those, uh, just so you can get used to used to doing that. A scientific calculator with trig. Uh, we don't allow you to use your cell phone. Even if you got a, 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 a scientific calculator on your cell phone, we don't let you use that because you can access the internet on your cell phone. So, you know, that would be very tempting even for me that if I, if I had access to almost every answer to every question, uh, then I would, pro and I didn't know the answer, then I would, myself would be very tempted to do a uh, to look it up. Uh, and uh, probably a TI-30X, this guy here is a very uh, inexpensive calculator and it'll do everything you need to do uh, uh, in this program that we're in. Standard class supplies, and you need to have a desktop tablet or notebook computer uh, to take just about any class at Lawson because of how heavily we depend on Blackboard to convey, convey information. There is a new there is a uh, free application that uh, that I'm going to look at where uh, we can uh, where I can send out text messages to everybody in the class. But I'll let you know if we try to implement that, uh, which seems like a pretty neat thing because they say that you know people there's over a 90 percent chance that people will see a text message when they don't do, when they won't do what okay. they won't do their email. Hey Earl, what do you need? Well, have a seat. You're not anything this morning? Okay, I'll, I'll do you a course. Uh, they, they, they extended the uh, drop ad until Thursday, so we'll be able to put you in it. And I don't have a, I don't have a brief, I didn't run a brief for you. Uh, so everybody okay here? Any questions? So I'll try to do that. We'll see if we can implement that. It was really, really neat. Uh, so what you can do is you uh, we can sign, we can set up a class, and you you go in and register. You don't I don't have access to your phone number. You don't have access to mine, and then I can send out text messages to the class, which is pretty neat. Or you can send out text text back to me uh, through the internet site, not through my actual phone number, which is a pretty neat feature. 
and uh, I'll see if I can figure out how to do it. Which is, uh, well, it had to be somebody you gave them uh, their phone number. Oh, you gave me your number. <laughs> so, so I you remember you wrote it down. So uh, I got your number. So, so I did text you. You're right, but I didn't do that application because I hadn't figured it out yet. Uh, of course, this says you need to make sure you got to use Blackboard, right? And this is the competencies for the class that we're going to do. Here's the grading criteria uh, that we uh, go by. And notice everything doesn't hold the same weight. And the story I tell in my class, I had a student send me an email said uh, he calculated his grade and thought he had a B. Uh, he made a C in the class. Uh, but what he did is he went into Blackboard and took all the averages for his test, his assignments, and he, he added them together and divided them by six. So he was given the syllabus agreement the same way as the final exam. And, of course, I went back and explained it to him. As well, <laughs> your syllabus agreement don't have the same weight as your what? Yeah. So you could take all your averages and multiply it by 0 0.02 and 0.25 and all that and then add it up and that would give you your actual grade average. So this is the actual weight. Uh, you can see in this class the predominant uh, thing is your, uh, is your labs. So we have about 14 labs we'll do in the, in the class. Uh, the week is, the semester is only eight weeks, so we've got a couple of labs pretty fast. Uh, we give three tests. It's only an eight-week term. We don't do makeup tests in this class. We don't have time for people to do that. Uh, the way the class runs is we'll take the test uh, at the end of the class. So on a test day, what we try to do is we try to be in lab before the test, and then we take the test at the end of the class. Then we come back the very next class, and we go over the test. Don't understand that. Well, what would happen if somebody didn't take the test? then what couldn't I do the next class? I couldn't go over the test until that person took the test. So uh, and because it's so we have a test about every four classes anyway, so you, you can't keep bumping test dates because somebody didn't take a test right before the next test is due. So that would be awful if I couldn't go over test one before you did what? Before you took test two. So to compensate for this, what we do at the end of the term is we drop your lowest test score. So I understand things happen, you know, in an eight-week term, and you might miss a test. Okay, and then of course that would be what that would get, that zero would count as your lowest test score. Everybody understand that? Okay, you okay there? No makeups. So what we do that's why we give out a course calendar uh, with this. And by the way, on an eight-week term, uh, so what we've done on a mini-term is we've made the class, we do the contents of two classes in one class. So we meet the class twice as long. So that means if you do miss a, if you miss a day in a mini-term, you're basically missing a week of work because classes only meet two days a week, right? Uh, if you are a person that don't like to show up on time and you don't like to come to class, then you are going to fail a bunch of classes. I have a guy, every class he's taken from me, he's failed. Not because he's not smart enough to do the work. He just don't do what? Don't show up. He usually skips the first test right off the bat. He's not there. Comes in an hour late, two hours late. And that's the only reason. That's the only reason. Of course, it's not the first one that I've done, had done that. Everybody okay on tests? Uh, first week, uh, quizzes and agreements. Uh, you, uh, by the next class, what's due? Syllabus so agreement, right? Uh, assignment one's due by midnight Friday. Assignment two is due by midnight, and you need to make sure you check your calendar and uh, check on those assignments. Uh, recorded lectures right now, uh, and we're still learning this, by the way. Tegrity was really neat. We used a technique called Tegrity to record all our lectures. Uh, it was very, very expensive. So what they're doing is they went to a recording thing called Screencast-O-Matic, and that's what you're seeing, these little squares around the 
outside that shows me the portion of the screen that's being captured. It saved the college $40,000 a year to drop Tegrity, so you understand. And when they put out a course survey to the students who used it, they found out about 1% of the student base used Tegrity. And probably about the same percentage of the instructors used Tegrity. Uh, all the online courses use Tegrity, but very few instructors like to record their record what they say. <laughs> so, so, but you have to understand this is a technology that even even myself I'm trying to learn. So, uh, these are actual classroom recordings. So when I upload them, you know they're up there, and I, I'm I get so. When I listen to it sometimes, I say, Rich, why did you say that? I say things wrong. <laughs> you know, y'all probably listen to that too. Uh, I'll get off. Uh, but no, they won't. The Tegri link's going to be gone. Uh, when you look at the website, uh, uh, Blackboard site, uh, there should be a link that says recorded lectures. So what we do here is we uh, we upload uh, with what you do with uh, with Screencast-O-Matic is you upload your lectures to YouTube. And then what you do is you uh, you can now you can embed them into the actual Blackboard site itself. Uh, this guy right here I don't like uh, because uh, on Tegrity if you if you if you turned your computer off while uh, while a lecture was uploading, when you turned it back on, it would start off it would come up and start uploading exactly where you was at. Screencast-O-Matic if you turn your computer off you have to start the whole upload again. So uh, that means to upload these lectures, I got to leave my computer on basically most of the time, and I'm in such a habit. So don't don't expect them to pop up the day of the lecture, because some of these guys, uh, because it's going over the network, uh, and it takes a pretty good while to get them up there. Integrity was really really neat. Uh, I really enjoyed it. But this this one. We're just going to, I mean, but $40,000, good gracious, I can understand. I can understand why, uh, why that would do that. His operation is the, there's only one there. I'm sorry, you used one. So this is a technology, so sometimes it don't work. Sometimes I mess up. Sometimes uh, I hit delete instead of upload. So don't depend on this, but but what we do this for, of course, you can go back and you can listen to the lecture, but we do it predominantly for people uh, that are absent, because if they're absent, you have a you have something you can do now to do what you can go back and figure out exactly what happened uh, on that day in class. So there's really no excuse for not not uh, for missing assignments and not knowing what we covered. We did a class, a uh, Hoover High School, and that's what I decided I'd never teach in a high school class. Uh, they had a career exploratory day. May, basically, it was just students who needed the, needed the credit. And then they had one guy that was assigned to it, and every, dis, every career uh, program here at Lawson would go out, and we'd be responsible for, I forgot what it was. They had students that were flat, argue with the instructor of the class that they wasn't responsible for anything if they weren't there. So you can't make me responsible for this. I didn't know it was due. You can't make it responsible for me because I was absent. And that was true. And I said, man, there ain't no way in the world. Uh, requires at least a C to pass the course. That's the policy of Lawson State. Because uh, you know, you require a 2.0 average, which is a C average, to uh, to graduate anyway. And once you get below a 2 point average in any class, it's going to be hard to maintain a, a 2.0 average. So that's so if you make a D in the class, then uh, you need to uh, you'll have to retake it. Of course, lateness. But another problem I have is this right here: course withdrawal. I have a problem with that somebody does this to me every semester that I can possibly remember where somebody will just stop coming to class. 
and I try it, and I, and I say it, I record it, I cannot withdraw you from a class. So if you stop coming, but I have to grade you, right? You understand? So if you stop coming, I grade you like you were here. So if you don't do an assignment, you get a what? You get a zero. You don't take a test, you get a zero. If you don't do labs, you get a zero. And at the end of the semester, you get an L. So if something happens and you need to withdraw from the class, then you have to do go through the withdrawal procedure that's on the website. It's very easy to do. Used to in the old days to drop a class, you had to do a drop at you had to do a drop form, and you had to take it around to every instructor that was teaching you and get them to sign off, indicating that you dropped. So we had a lot of people that wouldn't do that because just finding the instructors, you know, uh, they move around and the instructors sometimes, especially us, we don't always teach in the same classroom. Uh, so now it's it's online. So you withdraw from a class online. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to ask you a few questions. Why do you withdraw and stuff like that so they can document that, which is a lot better than the, the sheet. But if you withdraw from a class before the last, way, uh, last day to withdraw, then uh, you get a W in the class. Now, a W in the class does not account against your grade point average. So that's just like you didn't take the course. But you'll have to repeat it. You still have to repeat it, right? You understand. Now, if you, and people don't understand that, if you fail a class, it is part of your grade point average. So if you fail English, and then you come back and you take it and you make an A, then that F is going to be averaged with that A, and it'll end up to be a C. So some people in, in, in college think if they retake a course, then the, old, the new grade, now you get credit for passing the course, but every course you take in your, in your discipline counts toward your, grade, your GPA average. And once you get a zero and an average, it's real hard to get off. So there we go. That's a perfect example, right? You understand you make an F, you get no quality points. You make an A, what did that class count for? It counted for a C and your GPA average. So that's one of the reasons right off the bat they don't, they, they, a D is considered to be failing. So if you think you're going to fail a class, then what do you probably need to do? You're going to have to retake it anyway. What do you need to do? You need to withdraw from it, right? Y'all understand that. Now, the college calendar has a published last day to withdraw. If you don't withdraw before that day, if you withdraw before that date, you get a W. If you withdraw from after that date, you get a grade. Y'all understand that? So that's why it's very important, and it's around test three. So if it looks like you don't think you've got a chance of passing the course, instead of getting that F on your transcript, which is really, really hard to get off, what do you need to do? Withdraw. If you stop coming, I cannot withdraw you from the class. They call it the right to fail. So you have a right to fail the class. And believe it or not, probably, probably well over 90% of the Fs that people make in my class are because they don't do what? Yeah, I very seldom have... Uh, uh, so, uh, very seldom does people fail these classes because there's so many ways you can make points. So if you're not good in test and, you, and you're really good in lab, then you can pass class. If you're good in taking tests but not really great in lab, you can still pass the class. If you're not good in lab and not good taking tests, then you don't need to pass the class, right? Uh, then the rest of it, academic integrity, talks about, you know, not taking credits for other work, code of conduct means you're, you're not going to tear up loss in state equipment. Disability support uh, defines uh, that uh, I can't make special consideration because of a disability unless that disability is documented. So if you've got a, uh, some disability where it's going to impede you from uh, excelling or passing the class, uh, then you need to go to talk to Mr. Renee Hearn and, and then we'll, we'll develop some type of plan so even with your disability, you can still excel in the program. 
And we've had that happen. I mean, uh, we've had people that made A's that couldn't hear and all kinds of stuff. But but we made we made the the uh, we had one guy that uh, he had a computer. It was really neat uh, keyboard, and uh, we couldn't get we couldn't get a, somebody to sign. So what? We, they brought in, they bought in a quartz, uh, what they call a sonographer, and uh, she would sit back there and type, and he would just read the screen. It was really neat. He had a little setup, and she started a, a job, so she does that now. That's what she does. Uh, she, she's not in the court system anymore. She she has clients in the University of Alabama because, uh, and it's really, really neat. So she started her job right here because we couldn't got, they couldn't get a, 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 a somebody that knew sign language. Uh, late in the program, and uh, so he brought that thing up. I said, dang, that was pretty neat. A really smart guy. Too. Uh, a couple things down here in notes. So that says, so, uh, and don't, and, and this happened to me by two students last semester. Uh, they came in on the, de the day of the final exam and wanted to know if there was any extra work they could do to pass the class. On the day of the final exam, so you understand that. So, and, and I can't make special considerations to a person that has failed in a class. Uh, now, I could make it available to the whole class, right? So we could set up an extra point thing uh, for for extra points, but I'd have to make it available to the whole class. So, uh, if you think you're having problems and you think we can, we we might can do something for you. Then uh, you need to. Uh, I'll wait to the end of the semester when I can't do anything, right? Uh, and this other one is another one of my pet. Everybody has little pet peeves, right? Uh, my problem is that uh, people expect when they come in tardy for my class that I'm going to put, I'm going to get them on roll with being here. We are a roll calling college. Uh, we're responsible for doing attendance. We do that because of the number of financial aid programs we have on, available on the college. Most of those programs don't want to pay people that are not here. So that means we have to call roll. Uh, I call roll at the start of class. Usually the first day I, I load off because I know people are having problems with their schedule. So. Uh, once I call row, and I know pretty much well all y'all's names in here now, so uh, that means normally I don't call row, I just do row. Um, so if you come in late, then you need to come in and say, uh, you know, Rich, make sure I'm on row, and I'll, I'll go back and do the row. But usually I'm the kind of person, once I do something once, then it's out of my mind, right? You understand that? So once I call roll, then I don't think about picking up people that come in late unless they come up and do what? They let me know that they're here. Another thing is if you leave early. There's no such thing in college as excuse absences. So I've had people bring doctor's excuses in before, you know, and think I'm going to count them present. <laughs> but we can't, we can't do that. Uh, so if you leave early, uh, you don't have to say, uh, if you come up and say, Rich, is it okay if I go? I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> but if you come up and say, Rich, I got to go, then I'll, I might tell you that you're going to miss out on this and that, you know, but uh, it's, I can't keep you here. <laughs> so, you know, you're an adult. You're, you're responsible for your grade. You're responsible for completing the work. I'm not. So that means if you got to go, all you got to go up and say, Rich, I need to go. And that's all you need to do. Just let me know if you leave early. Uh, that That is also, not only is it keeping valid roles, which are submissive in court. Uh, we got an instructor that got in a lot of trouble because they just went in and put peas for everybody. And a guy got in trouble and said he was in school when he wasn't in school. But when they looked at the role, he was down as what? Well, present. But there was other things that said that he wasn't even present. And that instructor got in a lot of trouble. So I keep accurate roles. Another thing, of course, is deals with safety, uh, which if you leave early and you don't let me know, 
and you ought to be over there at your at your robots, right? You understand? I'm not going to stand over there while you're in lab and with my arms folded, waiting on you to you need you, you need something. So we'll have I give you all the lab procedures. So we have a sign off uh, list that I, I take care of, and I go down the sign off list. And if you turn around and you walk out that door and you don't let me know, and something happens, and we have to evacuate this building, and we go out there in the parking lot, and you are not there then we're going to have to send somebody back in here looking for you, right? You understand, which is a dangerous situation, right? Or if you come in late and I don't know you're here, right, that we have the same situation. So if you come in late or leave early, you need to let me know that you're here and or you need to let me know if you're going to leave early. And like I said, that's fine. Uh, you know, like I said, I might talk to you a little bit saying, okay, you're going to miss this and this and this. And, uh, but it's really just that's just what I'm doing because I'm concerned about your grade, right? You understand that? I don't like fail, I don't like people to fail my classes. Just like I don't like people saying, "Well, he failed me in that class. So and so failed me in that class." Odds are that person did not fail you, right? You did what? You failed yourself. Yeah. Turn off cell phones while you're in class. Or silence your cell phones. You need to make sure you check the evacuation procedure for the college. You need to take the syllabus and the quiz. And we don't need profanities in my classroom. So that's basically just a brief go over of the syllabus. And of course, you have a syllabus quiz to do, right? Everybody understand that? And where's all the quizzes and agreements? Well, it's under here under first week. And course information. Okay. And then right here, a big old link up there. Let me turn on what y'all see. So this is what the instructor sees. Uh, there it is. First week of uh, quizzes and agreements. So what quizzes do you need to do the first week? You need to do your syllabus agreement. When's it due? By the start of the second class. Syllabus quiz, evacuation quiz, and then... Uh, the dress code agreement. But the agreement to the syllabus basically says I've read the syllabus, I understand its content, I understand it's a binding contract between me and the college, and uh, it's kind of like when you install some applications, right? And it pops up and says, you know, do you agree with this, uh, we call them uh, end user license, uh, license agreements or EULAs. If you don't agree with one of those EULAs, then what happens? Yeah, it closes out. I mean, you could go to Walmart or someplace and buy a, a computer CD. People think that they're buying that program. They're not buying that program. They're basically leasing that program, right? You understand? It's a permanent lease on the program. So if you don't sign a lease agreement, then they don't let you lease the house. So uh, you need to be, uh, be careful about that. So the syllabus agreement and then, of course, the dress code agree, uh, adherence saying that you're going to end uh, you're going to uh, adhere to the dress code. I think it's a shame when one man has got to tell another man to pull the britches up. I don't know what your opinion is that. So, and uh, if you have any qualms about the uh, the dress code, you can make an appointment to go see Doctor Crawford and let him chew you out. Because <laughs> that the dress code is Doctor Crawford's baby. If y'all know Doctor Crawford, and so he don't like girls wearing. Pajamas to school. <laughs> so, so that's his dress code. Any questions on the syllabus? Syllabus agreement. Uh, here's the actual course content. This is where you can access all the lecture slides at. Um, any topic quizzes or anything that uh, we have to do. Find it going. Lecture slides, some links available. Uh, I didn't put it on there. The the recorded lectures will be in the course content section. So the integrity link is still is still uh, on the site, and as far as I can tell, the integrity is still up there. It's just that we're not supposed to use it anymore. So I'll remove that button from your site. Uh, all your reference material. 
uh, which is very, very important. So we don't use uh, your main uh, technical information on the robot is going to be the manuals that come with the robot. Okay. So here's the basic theory. That's the, uh, and then here's all your. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here's the robot manuals. So the first thing we're going to do when we do a lab is we're going to say, okay, find this information in the manual that comes with the robot. You know, uh, this is why we can't do this. We've got uh, six different robots in here. And all of them's a little different. Well, it would be impossible for us to get a textbook that would tell you how to do all these robots. And when you buy a robot, if your company buys a robot, what are you going to get? You're going to get the manuals that come with the robot. So what we do in this class is that we, we have you look up everything, and you write down page numbers, and then there, we leave a space on the lab where you can, uh, you can put the little procedure down and then when you go over to the lab, you follow your little procedures on how to create programs, how to name programs, how to delete, and all that other other kind of stuff. Y'all can ask Josh and Earl. They both had the operation and programming class. So we're going to be assigned uh, in a group of the, uh, in one of these robots right here, one of these four robots. And then uh, every robot, it's kind of like PLCs, from, uh, Program Logic Controllers. The first PLCs we got were square D's, and uh, they're not. That's that's how. And then uh, then we went to. Uh, we got some series ones, uh, GE series ones. And then we got some modicons. And then we finally went to um, the Allen Bradley. Now, how many schools did we get to go to on those PLCs? How many? None. Not a single school on the PLC. But what we found out real fast is that once you figure one of them out, they all basically do the same. So what you say, okay, is, is okay, I know what these guys are supposed to do, how do I do it on this rope? How do I do that same thing on this PLC? So we didn't have any PLC courses. Uh, how many robotic classes have I been to? I, 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 I went to a class. Uh, the welding instructors got a, uh, they got a welding robot up there. It's really neat. It's a fan. And uh, they had three seats uh, to get free training on the FANUC welding robot. Uh, I'd already been teaching robots for quite a while, so uh, they wanted me to go up there with them, so if they got in trouble, then I could make sure that that uh, we could handle them. So that was after I learned how to teach the course. So you're right, I've been the one, but it was kind of like when I first started teaching, we had to get a t continuing education units, which means we had to take classes so what I did was took classes on stuff I already knew how to do <laughs> that I'd learned on my own. So I took a class from Microsoft Office, I and mean, I'd been dealing with Word and PowerPoint for years and flow charting. I forgot what the other one was, but uh, that was pretty much well what that was. So yeah, I've been to one. But I'd been programming, I, I'd, I'd been writing programs and programming in, for a long time, so I understood programming. Right, you understand. So it was nothing for me just to figure out what instructions you needed to cause the robot to move. Uh, so that was. So once you learn one, so when you're going to be assigned to one of these robots, when we first started teaching the course, we tried to make the class do everything on every, they shifted robots, and we found out we got nothing done because you'd have to shift from this one to that one, and from that one to that one, and from that one to that one. And uh, we couldn't do, there was no way in the world we could do 14 laps. We were lucky to get through with just, just the students learning how to jog all the robots. So what you'll do is you'll come in and you'll be assigned a robot and you'll deal with that robot. You'll learn that robot real well. And then if you go out to a company and you get on, so you play around with the FANUC and you go out and get on an ABD, 
you're going to say, okay, how does this robot do what the FANUC does? Because they all do the same thing. You just got to figure out how to how to get how to run the teach pendant, how to get to the different uh, levels, and all this other kind of stuff. And then once you learn it, you say, okay, that's how we do it. Uh, now the projects class is a little different. We're going to shift y'all around a little bit, especially to start off with before this class starts using uh, using the robots. So y'all get an opportunity to try to jog all the robots and figure out how to do that. And then, then we'll move y'all to a, a robot that y'all deal with the rest of the term. Any questions so far? So here's our manuals. Uh, email, email, uh, there's an email, you can email me. And if you email anything about this class, what I want you to do is use this email instructor link on the Blackboard. And why that? Because what happens is it, it automatically puts a little subject header in there that I can sort into folders for the class. So it's just a lot easier for me to uh, go through my email. If all the email from this class goes in the folder for this class and all the email for another class, uh, you can email one of your students. Uh, so uh, instead, of know, instead of trying to learn their email address, you can come here. Uh, this is where you can go and see your grades. Now, this is where the tests and everything will be at, too. So the the uh, test we'll do uh, is going to be all uh, the test we're going to do is going to be uh, done through Blackboard. Now, this is where we'll put the test reviews. So this is where we'll place the previous test. Once uh, we go over them in class, we upload those previous tests uh, to Blackboard. And then that way you can use those tests to study for the other tests. All the tests in this course are, uh, and it says that in the text session, are uh, what we call comprehensive tests, which means uh, test two will have questions from test one. Uh, test three will have questions from test, test one and test two. Uh, and then, of course, the final exam is nothing but questions off the other three tests. So there will be no new material on the final exam. So how are you going to study for the final exam? Just go through those first three tests, right? And so, so all we do, all we use our final exam for is just a is just a good review of the course uh, before we before we move on. So this is where we're going to take tests. You can't do them all. You can't do them at home. You'll be able to do the previous tests on home. You'll be able to access the test review, but uh, we'll use this link to take the test in class. So. The tests we do in this class are going to be, uh, I don't know, I need to go back and look at them. So that's the Blackboard site. Got any questions on that? Yes, no? Okay, gang, y'all go ahead and take a break, and then we'll come back and look at our first lecture.